we are now going to show that this metric space or rather the semi metric space L2 of i is actually complete. The precise statement is known as the Reese Fisher theorem and as I have mentioned countable many times before it's a very very important theorem in the study of Fourier analysis. The statement is as follows let fn from i to c be functions in L2 of i. Suppose fn is Cauchy. This means of course that for each epsilon greater than 0 there exists capital N in n such that if n comma m are greater than capital M the norm fn minus fm is less than epsilon. This is just a recap of what it means for the sequence fn to be Cauchy. The conclusion is then there is there is a function f in L2 of i such that limit n going to infinity of norm f minus fn converges to 0. Okay, So let me immediately make an important remark the claim the claim so remark the claim does not say does not say fn converges to f point wise no it doesn't say that it doesn't say that what it says is that fn converges to f in the norm defined by l2 of i that is the norm coming from the inner product defined on L2 of i. So do not make the mistake of concluding that fn converges to f point wise even almost everywhere this is not true. This is not true even almost everywhere. What it is really saying is that in the norm that we have defined fn converges to f. Okay. So in the future when you take a course on Fourier analysis you will uh, uh, see this in greater depth. In fact one of the goals of Fourier analysis is to have sufficient conditions under which fn converges to f point wise or even uniformly. Many many theorems put sufficient conditions on fn's to make sure that this happens. Okay. So first an exercise a rather very easy exercise similar things you should have done in a first course in real analysis show that show that if xn is a Cauchy sequence Cauchy sequence in a metric space in a metric space then we can find we can find a subsequence subsequence call it xnk such that d of x n k comma x n k plus m is less than 1 by 2 power n k or rather 2 power k. Okay. Uh, what this is saying is that given any here it really does not matter this 1 by 2 power k really does not matter given any sequence that goes to 0, you can always make terms in this subsequence such that subsequent terms are always at least 1 by 2 power k close to the previous terms. Okay? So this is essentially saying that if you have a Cauchy sequence by sampling from that sequence sufficiently far apart, we can make successive terms really close to each other. The reason why we chose 1 by 2 power k here any epsilon n or epsilon k would have worked uh, going to 0. The reason why we made 1 by 2 power k is that this converges this series 1 by 2 power k converges really fast. It is a geometric series and that property is going to be exploited. Okay. So now coming back to the proof of the main result the Reese Fisher theorem we are going to apply this uh, to the Reese Fisher theorem. Um, what we are going to do is the following. Let f and k be a subsequence, be a subsequence such that 
not f and k minus minus fm is less than 1 by 2 power k whenever whenever m is greater than nk so this doesn't uh, this is not exactly what the previous exercise is saying but it's a slight variant of that what we are trying to say is that you choose this subsequence such that whenever you choose an element uh, m greater than nk then the terms f and k minus fm are at the max 1 by 2 power k close okay so now once you have done this define define g1 to be fn1 and gk by definition to be fn k minus fn k minus 1 okay now notice that successive terms are going to be less than 1 by 2 power the norm is going to be less than 1 by 2 power k minus 1 keep that in mind that's the reason why we have defined uh, differences of successive terms so this is for all k greater than or equal to 2 okay then observe that summation norm of g k k equals uh, 1 to infinity this is going to be less than or equal to non f n 1 plus summation k equals 2 to infinity norm f n k minus f n k minus 1 okay and this is less than or equal to norm f n 1 plus summation k equals 2 to infinity 1 by 2 power k minus 1 which is equal to norm f n 1 plus 1 this shows this shows that the series the series summation k equal to 1 to infinity norm g k converges or rather is bounded above same thing bounded above so we are in a situation where we can apply the theorem of the previous uh, uh, video first of all to do that observe that g n is in l2 of i why is g n in l2 of i well because g e g n is just the difference of two elements in l2 of i okay so by the theorem by the convergence theorem proved before proved before we get that summation k n equals 1 to infinity g n converges almost everywhere to a function f in l2 i okay now the goal the goal is to show that norm f m minus f converges to 0 as m goes to infinity notice what we have done we have obtained a function f in l2 i which is just the limit summation n equal to 1 to infinity of g n let's expand this out for a moment and see what is happening what is this going to be well this is going to be g1 plus g2 plus dot 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 but g1 is fn1 g1 is fn1 g2 is fn2 minus fn1 g3 is fn3 minus fn2 so on and so forth so you can see that this sum n equal to 1 to infinity of g n is the same as limit k going to infinity of f n k okay so now the goal is to show that norm f m minus f converges to 0 well to do that observe that norm f m minus f can be written as norm f m minus f n k plus norm f n k 
minus f okay now if k is very large if k is very large and m is greater than n k then norm fm minus fn k can be made less than 1 by 2 per k so the first term can be made really small now the second term we want to analyze is norm f and k minus f to analyze this term norm f and k minus f we are going to pull a similar trick to what we have done before observe that f and k uh, minus f is nothing but summation summation k uh, or m running from k to infinity of f n m plus 1 minus f n m okay uh, let me just change the index away from this m because it's already been used before so we can say summation j running from k to infinity f and j minus uh, f n uh, f and j plus 1 minus f and j and if you observe carefully this will be f minus f and k okay so what have we done here well let's write out a few terms what will be the first term it will be f and k plus 1 minus f and k then the next term will be f and k plus 2 um, minus f and k plus 1 and these two will just cancel off so rather i must write limit n going to infinity uh, no, no limit sorry uh, f and k plus 1 minus f and k plus f and k plus 2 minus f and k plus 1 so these two will sort of get cancelled off right and then you have successive terms which just get cancelled off and ultimately what you will get is limit uh, j going to infinity f and j minus uh, f and k which is just f minus f and k as required so we rewrite this term f minus f and k in terms of successive terms uh, which cancel off okay now observe that because successive terms are really close to each other they are uh, 1 by 2 power j close to each other and that series converges being a geometric series observe that summation j running from k to infinity of norm f and uh, j plus 1 minus f and j this converges because this will be just sum summation 1 by 2 power j okay again by the previous by the previous by the previous convergence theorem because f and j plus 1 minus f and j are elements of l2 of i because of that by the previous convergence theorem we can write norm of f minus f and k is less than or equal to summation j equals k to infinity norm f and j plus 1 minus f and j which is less than summation j running from k to infinity 1 by 2 power k which is going to be 1 by 2 power k minus 1 okay therefore what we get is norm fm minus f which was the original term we were interested in this is going to be less than 1 by 2 power k minus 1 okay when k is large when k is large this can be made as small as desired made as small as desired okay hence hence norm fm minus f converges to zero as m goes to infinity 
So this is a standard analysis proof where you just consider telescoping sums and add and subtract the appropriate term and just use the previous convergence theorem. So again, I will highlight the remark that I made right at the beginning of this uh, theorem. It does not say that Fn converges. This theorem does not say Fn converges to F pointwise. But what we have got is that there is a subsequence that converges to F pointwise. If you choose the subsequence such that subsequent terms are really, really small uh, compared to the previous terms, what we get is that Fn, Fnk converges to F almost everywhere. But you cannot conclude that Fn converges to F uh, pointwise even almost everywhere. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the video on the Reese-Fisher theorem.